Someone said, no, call the B.O. Mayo. I tell that the fleece, the guy here, you talk about your again. If I don't finish him. Pastor, a B.O. is not, I'm talking about Adibui, Oyedepo. Any time you hear him talk about your that, who, do they know his father? Kumuyi, Mommy Dahosa, these are the elders that I'm talking to now. I'm talking to our elders. These are the people we will be discussing today. One is late Archbishop Bessini Dahosa. The other is late Pa Elton. The next is Pastor Kumuyi himself of Deeper Life. And maybe one extra person you might want to find out at the end of this video. So stick around after the intro. Now today we are discussing something really important, which I think you have to really understand our subject today. A lot has been going on about the person of Pastor Kumuyi of Deeper Life. A very interesting, amazing man. And you have to understand something. You see, over time, if you have been watching my content right here as I get to discuss things happening in church, these are some words you'll be hearing in this video. One is words like administration, church administration. The other is this whole daddy and mommy factor that is prevalent today when it comes to churches like, you know, my papa, my mama. And the next is also looking at the main subject of today as well when we look at the person of Kumuyi. I want you to watch this video by Pastor Kumuyi before I get to discuss the things I want to discuss about it. I've been saying some difficult things for some months, for some weeks. Let me add this one. I said before that marriage committee is an institution, a creation peculiar to deeper life. It's not in the Bible. We, we, we risk it all just to help our young people. If we find that that marriage committee is not helping us anymore, is hindering us, and is hindering the young people from doing the will of God, and the young people fear marriage committee more than they fear God, will knock off marriage committee. Because marriage committee is our own making. It's not in the Bible. It's for administration. Praise the Lord. Let me add, women ministry is our own making. It's not in the Acts of the Apostles. Anybody that wants to sew a piece of clothes like Dockers to other people, she can do that without a women ministry. Anybody that wants to learn how to make soap, how to cook, how to do this, you can go to your nearby restaurant or somewhere and learn that. We don't have to have marriage committee do that. If you want to make, a, you know, how to dye clothes and all that, we don't, need money. we don't need a women ministry in deeper life to dye clothes. You can go and learn that in the suburb, in the localities there. If we find out that the women ministry is, uh, you know, taking us into the world. And we are interchanging and helping each other to know how to live like the world and dress like the world and marry like the world and deal with your husband like the world. And we're taking the church back to the world. The ministry of women is our own. Thank you very much. There is the ministry of women. It's our own making. If it's not helping us, if it's going to hinder us, we'll strike it off. Take my word. Take my word. Before I leave, before I leave, I mean before I go, I'm going to remove everything that I set up that I thought will help deeper life and make us holy, make us sanctified, make us deep, make us deeper. And I see it's not making us deeper and shallow. Before I leave, I'll uproot all of them and present to you a pure church before I leave. That's why I'm telling you, if you want to, if you want to stay in the church and you want to leave like the word of God is teaching us, you will be, what am I afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. I can only be afraid of the judgment of God. 
Therefore, whoever responds, praise the Lord. Whoever reacts, praise the Lord. We are going to stand on the word of God. This doctrine of the word, be not conformed unto this world. We're going to stand on it until Christ comes. And by the grace of God, I'm not going yet. I said I'm not going yet. But before I go, and I'm telling you, and all the leaders can hear, well, I'm not going to hand over, you know, deeper life to somebody who will come and destroy everything we built up for years. Because it's a man pleaser. Women pleaser. Never. Somebody who will stand on this word and honestly defend the faith once delivered unto the saints. That's what we are going to do. And the whole church will unite together and say, we're not looking for graduates. We're not looking for, you know, degrees. Whoever, Peter did not have a degree. Whoever will stand on this word and lead us to salvation. New creature that changes life. Whoever will maintain that sanctification, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Whoever will have backbone and stand, and stand faithful, and be willing to deny himself, sacrifice everything, and bring the church to obedience to the word of God. That's the kind of leader God will raise up for deeper life after I'm gone. And you, by the grace of God, make yourself available and stand on the word. Don't make yourself a problem to the church. Don't make yourself a person that we are pulling forward and then you are dragging us back. You'll not be like that in Jesus' name. That's right, so. Now you heard Pastor Kumi right there talk about the fact that before he leaves this earth, before he goes to be with the Lord, by the grace of God, that are some things that he has instituted, he has to change. Why? Because when it comes to the takeover, now I don't know whether, he, whether his takeover plan, not as if he's planning to leave anytime soon. It's going to be someone that is, you know, just like T.G. Jakes handed over to his daughter, if it's going to be his own offspring, we don't know that. But the person doesn't have to be educated and all that has to be someone that stands on the word of god which is something i like about the person of kumuyi now what what is the main idea of this video it is not today that what i'm doing or would i say questioning things that are happening in church or making commentaries about them started i have an example right here of Bishop Benzini Dahosa himself, as I'm going to be playing for you a video which connects to the particular notion that Pastor Kumuyi himself, if you have been a long time Deeper Life member up until recently, those who go to Deeper Life believe that when it comes to television, that is actually not okay for Christians to watch television. That was back then. As where God has placed you now, say to an organization that God has given uh, a ministry, what media will you recommend should be used to propagate the gospel that you think in addition from face to face and mouth to mouth, one to one on evangelism? Everything that God has created has been created for our benefit. Man in sin has allowed the enemy to capture all these things. The mass media today of Nigeria is mainly under the control of Satan. TV, radio are all created by God and created for us. And every one of them should be used. Literature plays an important part. TV plays an important part. Radio plays an important part. The mass media must all be brought under the control of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what will you say to those who believe that radio and TV are Satan's box? They are being used by Satan at the present moment. They were created by God. Satan couldn't create a single thing. Mm -hmm. You are saying that God created these things, but Satan people use it more. Absolutely. But does that, uh, will that be an answer to a man that doesn't understand spiritual? Is it evil, and let me put it that way, is it evil to have a radio? No, certainly not. What sin is there in having a television? 
no sin in possessing a television if you can't control yourself and your eyes are glued to that which is evil and that which is unseemly well then that means that the the box the tv has become your master when you remain master and shut off what you don't want to see or hear then you're the master and God is going to increase the amount of radio coverage for the gospel, increase the amount of TV for the gospel in every part of the world. Yeah. And I'm hoping that very soon we're going to have a, a Christian radio station and a Christian TV station in Nigeria. Glory be to God. That's our belief. I, I'm, I will not be doing justice to a visit to Dad and Mom Elton if I will not allow Reverend Cook and Pastor Mobile to ask a question at least or two uh, short ones each. Reverend Cook, what will you, from all you have had with this course now in about 50 minutes, what will you say, uh, ask as a question? Yes, uh, Dad, my question is, as a missionary and a general superintendent of a very big and large congregation, would you think you had some problems with church administration? And if you had some problems, how did you deal with them? Oh, yes. <laughs> Wherever you get people, you get problems. And even though they're Christians, there's problems. But God has brought into existence a church. I will build my church. And that's not a denomination. And when God said he would build his church, he said also that he had got an order, a government, an organization, an administration for that church. And that administration is comprised and composed of men, men that upon whom God has put his hand. They're found in Ephesians 4.11, and he set in the church first apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And God is raising up those ministries. I want to emphasize they're not titles and offices. They're ministries. Many men today have got the ministry and apostle and they don't know it. Many have got the prophet, bishop, apostle, prophet, and all these others. God is bringing back those ministries and they will be reestablished before the church can be brought into unity and to perfection. Now, of course, right now, Pastor Kumi himself has corrected that particular notion. So if you don't know about that, this is what he had to say about the reason why he instituted that particular doctrine of people not having to watch television and why it is allowed right now. At the beginning of this ministry, many, many years ago, we emphasized and we re-emphasized and we preached it every time and we made it everybody knew about it we said there are dirty things there were dirty things on the television and that those things pollute the heart they made the heart impure and because of that we discouraged watching television people are getting new methods and they're doing evil then you'll get new strategy and you'll get new method in doing the work of the lord in jesus name now these are the last days and evil people growing worse and worse how are they doing it they're going worse and worse because now they go beyond using their natural strength, using their natural ability. They see technology, they use telephone, they use the media, and they use all these connections, they use the Zoom, and they use all these things to expand. The evil they are doing in those messengers of Satan, if they're using the present day technology, and they're expanding how about me how about you then you will use those same things they're available they're not only available for messengers of, you know who do evil they're available for the people that are doing good you will use them i said you will use them you know now you have to understand where kumi himself comes from as a preacher of the word of god and in case you don't know even though his ministry started back in 1973, in case you don't know as well, he used to be a mathematics teacher before he became also a mathematics lecturer at the University of Lagos. 
So as at 1973 when his church started, he used to be a member of the apostolic faith where he was excommunicated. But I was just finding something interesting because he was excommunicated as at 1977. But he started his ministry as at 1973. Even while he was in the apostolic faith mission, he started his own church or would I say his own kind of like ministry. Listen to him talk about his excommunication right here and why he was asked to go away. And as people like me, that it was a ministry. I didn't intend to be any church service. It will kind of grow to a church. I felt it would be a ministry, teach the word of God, teach the word of God to people. And the church has going appreciates that. And so they called me and said, look, this thing you're doing you know, is going to add you uh, something you will not enjoy. And I asked my overseer, the pastor, I said, what's going to happen? Tell me. He said, we are going to send you out of the church. I said, why? He said, because there is something you don't approve. You don't approve believing the Bible, teaching the Bible, instructing others about the Bible. He said, no argument, don't come and pray to us here, we don't accept what you are doing. And so, they excommunicated me, 1977. And then I continued the Bible study, you will continue. I said, you will continue. What I want to tell you is this. Somebody saw me in America, went for a conference and uh, his overseer of another church and he called me and I, came, I went to him he said i had a church such and such that church and he lambasted that church and he abused that church insulted that church and said i learned that uh, they excommunicated you and he sent you away that is wrong i said hold on you are right he called me, he warned me, and he told me that what I was doing was not in line with their church policy. Yeah, right? Evangelism was not in their church policy. Teaching Bible study in your home, house fellowship, that was not in their policy. They told me, and then they told me if I didn't stop, this is what they will do. And so when I didn't stop, they handled me in their own understanding as a disobedient member. And they told me, you are not a good member. And that's right. I wasn't a good member there. That's why they sent me out. And I didn't want to be a good member there because I was convinced in what I was doing. That man, the overseer of another church, looked at me and said, You're a real child of God. I thought you will run down that church. I thought you would blame them. I said, No, I'm the one to blame. I didn't obey them. And if everybody did what I did, and there's no obedience in the church, they told me the church will scatter. And they didn't want their church to scatter, that's why they sent me away. You see, you must carry your good conscience everywhere. Now that makes a whole lot of sense, right? Because in as much as he had a disagreement or it was a good ground that he was sent away according to him, you get to understand his personality just from what he was narrating there. True or false, I'm just taking people by their word. And that is also prevalent in what happens today in church breakaways that we have, whereby one could be in a particular church and while being there, you are doing things that are maybe contrary to the church or maybe tomorrow that particular branch you are pastoring becomes your church or becomes your headquarters, that kind of thing. Now, we have discussed that before in this video, looking at the person of Apostle Suleiman and things happening in his church and all that. So if you have not watched the video, I'm going to link it in the description section. Where am I heading to with this? Pastor Kumuyi is known for his numerous doctrines that are geared towards building a deeper life in Christ for his followers or members of deeper life. 
understanding the psychology of even the name of his church, even he himself talks about it, begins to make you understand why sometimes men would bring out doctrines that they believe should guide the church administration, even though some of those doctrines may not be scriptural, like you heard him say at the beginning of this video. What point am I trying to make you understand? There are many things that are doctrinal today in the church that are not necessarily scriptural, but the church has been able to administer this as a modus operandi of how they function. Just like the video that is viral everywhere that Pastor Ia Debo said, if you don't pay tight, you will not go to heaven. That might actually be an administration is trying to institute in them to make sure that they are paying tight, even though it's not something scriptural. But it's more of like coin from you obeying God, whatever, to coin such kind of a doctrine. Doesn't mean that he himself, that God told him or this and that, that if you don't pay tight, you will not go to heaven. So there are many things that have been said by many pastors that I think they really have to come and unsay them or apologize for them or change them while they are still living so that tomorrow it doesn't become something uh-huh. Now let's look at the person of Bishop Archbishop Idahosa. Now later I'm going to be looking at his person with Pa Elton so you get to understand a couple of things that many people don't understand about the root and foundation of Nigerian Pentecostalism and things that happened in the past that are still prevalent right now but people are not seeing. Here's an interview where Bishop Benson Idahosa was talking with Pa Elton. And look at the questions he was asking him as at that time about television and all that. And think to yourself, what might have motivated him asking these questions? Was it because of Kumi's situation? Was it because of some other thing, some other person said that kind of thing or whatever? Even though Pa Elton said what he said remarkably well and he answered their questions, of course, you could see him right there doing what? Pa and Ma. So when this whole daddy and mommy thing didn't start like, it's not, a, it's not a new thing. He refers to Elton as, you know, daddy and then mommy and all that kind of thing. So if you know their relationship already, you would know a couple of things as to what I might be looking at sometime later. What is the real essence of this video you're watching right now? It's for you to understand that when it comes to church administrations or things that happen in church or are seen as doctrines, over time they get to change. Let's look at the whole idea of television right now. As at that time, there was no social media, smartphones and all that. So as at then, Kumuyi didn't foresee that there's gonna be a time whereby it's not gonna be just <laughs> television anymore, but right now anyone could just with their smartphones see anything they wanna see on social media and all that. And of course, he's using a phone himself and he's been able to adjust and see why right now they have to engage and change some things. But according to him, like you heard him say, there are certain things that would need to be changed because these people are seen as fathers. And this is what they do is what the small, small ones or the ones that are upcoming and that's what they copy and replicate. Why? Because if you ask them, their reference point is not always the word of God. It's because my papa did. My this one did, my this one did. There were times that even Pa Elton himself had, I see called him Pa Elton, that's what he's being called. Elton himself has some disagreements, of course, with, in the, with the Nigerian church as well, with what was going on, which I'm gonna be looking at maybe much later. But for you to understand that there is a lot going on right now in churches that have been instituted by people who call themselves fathers but it's not supposed to be. And by the time these people even think of conceive the idea of correcting it, we don't know if that's going to happen. You say, I also respect Pastor Kumui. I respect Bishop Oyedepo and all the other elders in the church. But I want to use this as a medium to tell them to come and change many of the things they've said that are putting people in trouble. All of our elder pastors. Bishop Benson Idahosa is no longer with us. 
so he cannot correct anything he might have done or said but his wife is with us these are the elders of today's church we need them to talk someone said no call the biome pastor a biome is not i'm talking about adibui oyedepo kumuyi mommy dahosa these are the elders that i'm talking to now i'm talking to our elders not our mates and our slight seniors i'm talking to our elders now this is the time when you lent your voices to change many of the things that we believed in error i love pastor kumuyi he's come out now and said that people can now use television the the the, the story is from uh the vanguard uh, why deeper life embrace the use of television social media others ah. <laughs> Oh, 